The Empire Strikes Back is the fifth episode of Star Wars, also known as the second Star Wars film. It gets a little confusing unless you've been following things for many years. Each month we're getting closer and closer to Force Awakens this December, and this month I'm talking to you guys about my favorite Star Wars movie thus far. And even though you guys probably knew this, I'm going to be respectful to those who didn't. This review is going to contain spoilers. If you've never seen Empire Strikes Back, I'm going to be talking in detail about this film. You've been warned. So in 1977, Star Wars exploded. It was gigantic. You guys all know this. It was huge. It changed cinema forever. It changed the way people anticipated movies. It changed the way people wrote about movies. It changed everything about movies. Suddenly people were trying to get details and little morsels about Empire Strikes Back and its production. Reporters were actually trying to find out about this movie. People were trying to figure out what it was about. It wasn't like today. There was no internet. It was just if you read an article in a paper or a magazine or you were part of a Star Wars fan club, maybe you could hear some little tidbits about The Empire Strikes Back before it was released. And I wasn't alive in 1980, but my father was, and he told me quite a bit of things about the anticipation for this movie being so huge. People People weren't really sure even what this movie was going to be about. They just knew it was another Star Wars movie and we have to see it now. Just like the first Star Wars film, what Lucas did with that movie so well was continuously expand his world, the universe of Star Wars, scene to scene. And what The Empire Strikes Back did so successfully was do that exact same thing with the world, continue to expand it and show us different locations, but it also did the same thing with the characters. This is the movie where Luke, Leia, Han, and Vader in particular all went to emotional grounds they had never tread before, and we as an audience got to experience that. The movie opens with Luke riding on a Tauntaun, a creature that's sort of like a cross between a horse and a goat. We learn that the rebels are hiding on this place called Hoth, the snow planet. Something I've always loved about The Empire Strikes Back that it doesn't always get credit for is the fact that it's far funnier than the first film. This is a really funny movie. Just the banter between Han and Leia. You stuck up, half-witted, scruffy-looking nerve herder. Who's scruffy-looking? When Han is trying to find Luke, Luke is stranded out there somewhere because this Wampa attacks him and his Tauntaun and drags him back to his cave. One of the rebels says to Han, your Tauntaun will freeze before you reach the first marker, then I'll see you in hell. Han's a badass in this movie. We'll talk more about that later. He does some stuff in this film that's really awesome. Another thing about this movie, it's just, it's so beautiful. It is such a well shot movie. The cinematography in The Empire Strikes Back is still to this day striking. And I'm not talking about any of the visuals. I'm just talking about the camera setups. I love the way this movie looks. Rest in peace. Irvin Kirshner, you did a fantastic job directing this film. Once Han does find Luke almost dead, lying out in the middle of Hoth, the Tauntaun keels over dead. He slices open the Tauntaun with Luke's lightsaber to save Luke and stuff him inside there. And I've always thought the Tauntaun guts resembled tater tots. You'll probably never look at tater tots the same way again. Napoleon, let me have some of your tots. Get your own tots! Gosh! Uh, I thought they smelled bad on the outside. In my opinion, John Williams' score also rivals the original. The Asteroid Field song, Yoda's theme. Leia kissing Luke. A little awkward, though, knowing where that goes. You know, I can imagine Luke had a moment after Return of the Jedi where he kind of just sat maybe like in his X-Wing and was like, <laughs> Speaking of John Williams' score, this movie introduced the Imperial March, which just might be the most famous piece of music ever composed for a film. Darth Vader didn't have his own theme in the original Star Wars movie. He just had very low tones. In this movie, he actually has a theme. The whole empire got a theme in this movie. Dun, 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 dun. You guys love it. I love it. We all love it. It's amazing music. But it helped add this weight to the empire. In this movie, the empire truly felt like a force to be reckoned with. In the first one, they're bad guys and they're big, and you felt the size of the Death Star and the impactfulness of it. But in this film, you truly felt this force just overwhelming the Rebels, despite the fact that they lost their ultimate weapon. That's another great thing about The Empire Strikes Back. As the title hints, they strike back. Our heroes lose throughout the entire film. Just the fact that the Millennium Falcon, the coolest ship ever, doesn't work throughout the whole movie. It's broken all the time. It makes our heroes feel vulnerable. They can lose. They can die. They can be hurt. And you feel the weight of that throughout this movie. And it makes everything so much more intense. And all of this is foreshadowed by just one look that Han gives Luke right before Luke runs off to his speeder. He knows some dark shit is on the horizon. Vader is such a badass in Empire Strikes Back. He's like Frieza. If you mess him up, he will kill you. If you fail, 
you will die. He's taking out his own people left and right. Not a great business policy. There's probably a very interesting contract these Imperials have to sign when they sign up for the Empire, but it makes for a very compelling villain and one that you actually fear because every time someone screws up in just the slightest way, they have this look like, I'm about to fucking die. Vader's gonna kill me. I'm, I'm done. We're done. And one of the reasons I love the Battle of Hoth so much is because all the characters are involved. It's not just the people in the ships, like the original Death Star attack at the end of Star Wars. That sequence was thrilling and completely revolutionary, but it was all focused on the ships and all of our other characters were just sort of there watching. In Empire Strikes Back, the Battle of Hoth, everyone's involved. Han's trying to make sure Leia gets out safely. Leia's trying to make sure the troops get out safely. Luke is involved in the actual battle, of course, and so since all of our characters are actually doing something, it's so much more thrilling. And as I already mentioned, just like the first Star Wars, Empire continues to expand this galaxy even more as Luke heads to the Dagobah system in search for Yoda. Obi-Wan's spirit ghost has instructed Luke to go find the person who trained Obi-Wan. And I gotta talk about the TIE Fighters and the Millennium Falcon and the Asteroid Field. This movie is 35 years old this year, and just like with the first Star Wars, I watched the original, uncut, unaltered edition of Empire Strikes Back, and this entire sequence, my mouth was dropped the whole time. I never closed my mouth. I got shivers and tingles and goosebumps all through my face and body. John Williams score. Luke eventually crash lands in Dagobah with R2, and this is one of the best film sets ever constructed. It feels completely real. You feel as if you're in another strange, otherworldly planet. There is not a single thing in this set that feels like a set. Special thanks to the wife for actually getting me the X-Wing from the Dagobah set. I have all the moss that goes on this downstairs. You can cover the entire thing with moss. It's amazing. Luke's arrival on Dagobah, of course, eventually leads into one of the greatest movie characters of all time. And that's a phrase I'm gonna be using a lot in this video, by the way, one of the greatest of all time and then something, because this is one of the best movies ever made, Yoda. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I'm kidding, but seriously, Yoda is one of the coolest movie characters ever, and he's not even real. It's a puppet. Frank Oz and his team, the things they did with this character, to this day, astounds me. The writing for Yoda is so great, too. When you first meet him, he's so hilarious. Looking? Found someone I would say you have, hmm? <laughs> Yoda is so funny. It makes us care for him. It makes us love this little thing. And we don't even know that he's Yoda yet. And then once we learn that he is the Jedi Master, he takes on this wise, wizardly-like appearance. I cannot teach him. The boy has no patience. He will learn patience. Mm. Was I any different when you taught me? This movie also provided us with the first look at who keeps Vader on a leash, the Emperor. We get one scene in which the Emperor and Vader are having a conversation and Vader suggests turning Luke Skywalker to the dark side. Empire already got the combat and the battles and the epic feel of this sci-fi world perfectly. What it did even better was explore the tense and emotional depths of Yoda's teachings to Luke. I was honestly raised on Yoda's teachings. I'm serious, my dad has repeated more lines from The Empire Strikes Back to instruct me on how to live than really anything else. I can recall so many times in which I was kind of nervous about something or I wasn't sure I could do something and my dad takes his hand, puts it on my shoulder and goes, do or do not. There is no try. He would tell me things that Yoda taught to Luke and it would give me the courage to do whatever I was wanting to do. I'm serious. Now once Han and everybody flee into one of the bigger asteroids away from the TIE Fighters, they discover they're not quite in an asteroid. In fact, they're in some sort of creature and they fly out of its mouth. Now that's the kind of writing that just makes The Empire Strikes Back so great. That's not a necessary thing. They could have just flown out of the asteroid, but they were like, no, let's have him be in the belly of some creature. That'll be great, right? By the way, that thing's called a uh, exogorth, also known as a space slug. Jeez, I'm a fucking nerd. I gotta talk about Luke's psychological battle when he enters the cave and he finds what he thinks is Darth Vader and they have a very brief lightsaber battle only to have Luke 
cut off Vader's head, the head explodes and it's Luke's head inside the helmet. What does that mean? Can you imagine really people in 1980 sitting in a theater after having experienced the extremely fun film Star Wars and then being exposed to this emotional experience in which metaphorical imagery is placed in front of you and you're like, what? In retrospect, watching the film and knowing what happens, it makes sense. But for a film that was so incredibly successful like Star Wars to now have its sequel go to these places, that was an extremely brave thing these filmmakers did. Because they risked the general population at that time being like, what the hell is this? This sucks. And my dad did tell me in 1980, a lot of people when this movie ended were very confused. They were like, uh, is that it? I mean, because really think about it. I grew up being able to just pop in the next VHS tape. These people had to wait three years for Return of the Jedi to come out and everyone's like, what did I just see? This is crazy, oh my gosh, oh no! This movie also introduced us to bounty hunters. We got Bosk, IG-88, Forlom, and some other people. Yeah, I know other names. <laughs> and of course, the great Boba Fett. And I have always loved how Vader specifically singles him out and goes, no disintegrations, as you wish. In just that one shot, and in that one sentence, you understand that Boba Fett has a reputation. Vader knows of his reputation. Vader knows of Boba Fett's reputation. That means Boba Fett is freaking awesome. Now I gotta talk about the scene in which Luke tries to raise his X-Wing out of the water and can't do it. He doesn't have the strength. He doesn't think he can do it. He has absolutely no confidence. Yoda's like, judge me by my size, do you? And he walks up and just lifts the X-Wing out of the water perfectly and lands it right in front of Luke. And this scene ends with one of the best movie insults of all time. I don't, I don't believe it. That is why you fail. Oh, I mean that. That is cold. That cuts. That cuts deep. Now Han and Leia eventually reach Cloud City and we meet Lando, who's just a very suave guy. He's an old smoothie. I love how he's just talking to Han like, hey man, what's going on? Oh, Leia, hello, what have we here? He just turns on those player vibes like instantaneously. He's like, oh my goodness gracious, look at you. <laughs> You truly belong with us here among the clouds. Luke is eventually haunted by visions of Han and Leia being harmed in this city in the clouds, and against Yoda and Obi-Wan's warnings, he flies off to search for Cloud City, and Obi-Wan's like, that boy is our last hope. No. There is another. Again, Empire Strikes Back is a movie that hints at things. It leaves you hanging. The success of Star Wars is solidified. They know that Empire is going to be seen by a lot of people, so now they can do cliffhangers. They can make you wonder, what are they talking about? Now, as I said, Han is a badass in this movie, and as soon as it's revealed that the Empire is at Cloud City, those doors open, Darth Vader stands up. What does Han do? Instantaneously grabs his blaster, starts shooting at Darth Vader. He doesn't care. He's going to kill that guy. He's like, oh my god, that's Darth Vader. You're going down. Vader, of course, blocks the blaster beams and everything, but it's just so cool that Han was ready and willing to do that. And as those doors close and they sit down for what looks like some sort of dinner, I have always wondered, what the hell did they talk about? It had to have been a really awkward dinner conversation, that's for sure. And Han is eventually tortured while Vader watches, and he later reveals that they didn't even ask him any questions. The Empire's, there's some deep, dark shit going on there. Which leads into one of the most emotional, in fact, probably the most emotional scene in the entire original trilogy, Han being put into the Carbonite, and Harrison Ford's suggested line of, I know, when Leia says, I love you. It's amazing stuff. It's so emotionally powerful. And I watched this scene. I've seen this movie 100, 200, 300 times. I cried. I honestly cried. My eyes teared up. Now, as I said, growing up, my dad used a lot of lines from this movie to teach me certain things. He also used some of them against me. Like when Darth Vader says, I'm altering the deal. Pray I don't alter it any further. My dad would often say that when he changed his mind. And I couldn't do anything about it because he quoted Darth Vader. Thanks, Dad. I've always loved the end of that scene, though. Right after Darth Vader says that, it's very subtle filmmaking. Lando just kind of reaches up and goes like this on his neck. Like Darth maybe just gave him a taste of a force grip. Luke approaching Vader in that room is some of the best filmmaking I have ever seen. The lack of music. The orange. The mist. Luke looking at his blaster and putting it down, knowing this isn't going to do me any good in here. I just got shivers just now saying that. 
Oh my God, The Empire Strikes Back. It's so tense. It's the perfect setup for one of the greatest confrontations in film history. As you guys know, Luke comes in with his overconfidence and Vader is just the calm, quiet, master of the dark side. He overpowers Luke with just his mastery over the force, throwing objects at him left and right. This entire confrontation is 10,000 times better than just the brief little lightsaber battle we got in the first Star Wars movie. Because not only is it more impressive from a choreography standpoint, it's longer, the sets are amazing, but it is so emotional. And of course, you guys know the eventual reveal, no, I am your father. I unfortunately can't really remember being a kid and being shocked by that. In my mind, it was just always that. I have seen videos, though, on YouTube of kids seeing that for the first time, their mouths dropping. It's the best twist in cinema history. It changes everything. It takes our heroes and villains to even darker places. And I've always loved how when Vader is trying to get Luke to join him, Luke looks down and willingly commits suicide. He doesn't know he's going to fall through some pipe system. He's dying in his mind. He has nothing left. And that's why I've always hated how the special edition added a scream in. No, Luke willingly offered his life. That's why there's no scream there. The fact that he survived was entirely coincidence and him reaching out to Leia through the force. Leia responds, hears Luke and goes to rescue him. Our first hint that she might be that other person Yoda was referring to. Han Solo is in Carbonite. Boba Fett is escorting him to who knows where. Our heroes find Finally escape the Empire's grasp when R2 fixes the hyperdrive and the Falcon finally works and our film ends with them discussing some sort of rendezvous on Tatooine. We don't know what they're talking about. It's a cliffhanger. What? This movie surprised everyone. I have a first-hand account from both of my parents about how the entire audience of their theater in 1980 was just shocked and blown away. People were just sitting there in awe at one of the fastest moving films ever made. There is not a single dull moment in The Empire Strikes Back. Not one. This is a two hour movie that feels like 15 minutes. It's so amazing. It's one of the best films ever made as I've said a thousand times. If I had a grade higher than A+, this movie would get it. But since I don't, The Empire Strikes Back abso fucking lootly gets an A+. Oh my god, I rewatched this movie an hour ago and I'm still getting goosebumps thinking about it. It's such an amazing achievement. If you've never seen the Star Wars films, please do yourself a favor, watch them. I'll be returning next month with my review of Return of the Jedi and then Force Awakens. <sighs> Guys, you're the best. Thank you so much, as always, for watching. I do greatly appreciate it. I feel the need to always remind you guys that I do really appreciate you guys watching. Thank you. And as always, if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.